There's nothing you can do to make God stop loving you because God's love is not based on who you are, it's based on who he is. That's the first purpose, is to let God love me. You were planned for God's pleasure. People go, why am I made? I'll tell you why you're made. God made you to love you. If he had wanted to love you, you would not exist. God made you to love you. Now, where in the world is that message not needed? This is why the book keeps selling, because it, it is the fundamental issue of life. Why am I here? There's no more fundamental question than why am I alive? Yeah. Okay. What am I here for? Okay. There's the question of existence. Why am I alive? There's the question of significance. Does my life matter? There's the question of purpose. What am I here for? You don't get any more basic than that. And that itself is a timeless question. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. You didn't have any idea that Purpose Driven Life would do this. No. What, what made you write that? Yeah. Well, I think first, you know, as a pastor for so many years, I've counseled thousands and thousands of people. And I've also stood at the bedside of countless number of people as they took their last breath. Okay. And when people are dying and they know they're dying, what they say at the end is often very profound, yeah. very, very profound and very important because they're thinking these are my last words on this side of eternity. And I, I kept hearing people talk about purpose, relationships, love, the stuff that really matters. And what I've discovered as a pastor is we eventually figure out what matters most. It just takes us so long, okay? Not a single person that I've been with when they're dying has said, bring me my trophies. I wanna see my golf trophy. Bring me my diploma. I want to look at it one more time. <laughs> Bring me that gold watch I got from the business I get. No, when people die, you know what they want? They want people around them. They want relationships. And eventually we always learn it's about love. Okay, it's all about love. Now, God has five purposes for our lives. We're not going to go into all of them. But they're five, you're, you're planned for God's pleasure. You're, you're formed for God's family. You're created to become like Christ. You're uh, shaped to serve God and you're made for a mission. These five purposes are modeled in Acts 2 by the first church. They're explained by Paul in Ephesians 4. Jesus prays for them in uh, John 17. He says, this is the five things I did with the, 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 the disciples. But they're best summarized in the five verbs of the great commandment and the great commission. So if nobody gets anything else that I say right now, this is PDL summarized. One day Jesus is walking down the street and a guy comes up and says, Lord, what's the most important command? He goes, oh, that's not rocket science. It's easy. I can summarize all the law and the prophets in two verses. Okay, here's the whole Old Testament, two verses. Uh, love God. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Oh, and by the way, love your neighbors yourself. Okay, now we'll come back to that, but we get two of the purposes of life from the great commandment. Love God with all your heart and love your neighbors yourself. Then right before Jesus went back to heaven, he gives his last words. Last words are important. The very last thing Jesus says is, go make disciples, uh, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teach them to do everything I've commanded you. These three purposes from the Great Commission and two purposes from the Great Commandment are the purposes of life, and they're also the purposes of the church. The purpose of the church is to help you fulfill the five purposes for your life. So what are they? Um, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. The word for that in the Bible is called worship. Worship is simply expressing love to God. It is the first purpose of my life. My, the Father seeks worshipers, okay? Now, I could be expressing love by myself in a quiet time, with you in a small group, you and Lori in a small group, or with a thousand people. It's still worship. Anytime I'm expressing love to God, I'm worshiping, okay? Love your neighbor as yourself. The word for that is called ministry or service. The Greek word is diakonia, service, deacon. We get it from that. It means to serve. And when I love God with all my heart and I serve him, that's worship. When I love other people with all my heart and I serve them, that's service or ministry. So we get worship and ministry from the Great com Commission, Commandment. In the Great Commission, it says, go make disciples. That's 
evangelism. We're to tell other people the good news. We're to pass it on. The only reason I'm saved, somebody told me. Right. Okay. Somebody told me. So I'm supposed to tell other people. And then it says, teach them to do everything I've told you. That's discipleship. Okay. That's another purpose of my life, to grow in Christ. To become, we're, and, and then in the middle, it says, by the way, baptize them. What's that? Baptism is a symbol that you're part of a family. It's a symbol of fellowship. It says, I'm not just a believer, I'm a belonger. And you guys know, we've heard a lot today, we have hear people say, well, I love Jesus, I just don't need a church. Well, that's like saying I'm a bee, but I don't need a hive. Or, or I'm a football player, but I don't wanna be on any team. Or I wanna be in the army, but not any platoon. Uh, it, 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 a, the Bible says a Christian without a church family is an orphan. And so we're not just believers, we're belongers. And so that's the element of fellowship, that we're better together. So the book's all about all five purposes. The most important one, though, and I want to say it here, is the first one, that your number one purpose in life is to let God love you. Oh, my goodness. Not for you to love God, but to let God love you. Now, let me explain this. From cover to cover in this book, from Genesis to Revelation, the Bible says that the whole reason the universe exists is God wanted a family. God wanted a family, okay? He didn't need a family. He wasn't lonely. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are in a relationship to themselves in a love relationship, but he wanted a family. The Bible says God is love, not that he has love, that he is love. It's his, his essence, it's his nature, it's his character. The only reason there's any love in the universe it's because God created us and he's a God of love. If God was not a God of love, you and I would not have the ability to give and receive love. The only reason we have the ability to give love and receive love is we're made in God's image. Cows don't love, slugs don't love, worms don't love, fish don't love, only created in his image as the ability to love. Now, the Bible says God is love. If I have all this love, and I don't bestow it on something, a person, a pet, something. What good is the love? God wanted to show his love. And so he created the universe. And he created a universe just to create this galaxy, just to create this planet, just so it sets on the axis that one degree this way we'd burn up, the one degree this way we'd, turn, we'd freeze up. It's just perfectly designed for human life, just to create the human race just so we could create Matt and Lori, just so we could love you. Wow. That's beautiful. So for those who are, who are listening, you, you got to realize that if God paid that much attention, the whole universe was created because he wanted to create you so he could love you. If God loves me and I love me, you don't like me, what's your problem? Mm -hmm. Okay, in other words, I, I don't need your approval to be happy. Right. You know what I'm saying? If, yes. if I'm loved by the Father, Yeah. Okay, so what kind of love does God have? What's well, unconditional? God loves you on your good days and on your bad days. He loves you when you feel it and you don't feel it. He loves you when you think you deserve it and when you think you don't deserve it. You can't make God stop loving you. You can try, but you will fail. There's nothing you can do to make God stop loving you because God's love is not based on who you are, it's based on who he is. That's the first purpose, is to let God love me. You were planned for God's pleasure. People go, why am I made? I'll tell you why you're made. God made you to love you. If he had wanted to love you, you would not exist. God made you to love you. Now, where in the world is that message not needed? This is why the book keeps selling, because it, it is the fundamental issue of life. Why am I here? I'm here to be loved by God. And the Bible says we love him because he first loved us. Our love's a response. We don't start with loving God. People tell me all the time, you know, pastor, you know, I think my problem is I don't love God enough. And I say, no, that's not your problem. Your problem is not that you don't love God enough. Your problem is you don't really feel and understand how much he loves you. Because if you really understood and felt how much God 
loves you. You can't help but love him, yeah. okay? It's not a duty. Yeah. It, it's just, I have to love somebody who loves me that much. And so I start with the first purpose of living in God's love, letting God love me, and then learning to love him back. And that's called worship. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.